Hello and welcome to our instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to replace the battery in the late 2020 13 inch M1 MacBook Air. This installation does have the potential for damaging your MacBook if you're not careful. So be sure to read any information included with your kit and watch this video in its entirety before proceeding. We've gathered all our materials, have drained our battery until our MacBook Air shut down, and are working on a soft, static-free work surface. We're now ready to begin. The first thing we need to do is remove the bottom cover. There are 10 total pentalobe screws that we need to remove. Start with the four screws along the hinge edge as they're longer than the others. Then, remove the remaining six screws, which are shorter. You should now be able to remove the bottom cover. The first thing that we're going to do now that we're inside is disconnect the battery. To do this, you'll first need to flip the metal latch securing the connector to the open position. Then, gently lift up on the connector so that it comes free. Next, we're going to need to disconnect the trackpad cable. Start by removing the two Torx T3 screws holding the cable cover in place. Then, disconnect the cable connector by lifting straight up. You can then carefully peel the trackpad cable away from the battery. Next, we're going to remove the speaker to the right. Start by disconnecting the speaker cable. Next, remove this Torx T3 screw holding in the speaker unit. The last thing we need to do is remove the adhesive strip near the bottom of the speaker assembly. To remove it, simply peel back the exposed tab, then pull straight back until all the adhesive pops free. The assembly should then lift up and out of the chassis. To remove the speaker assembly on the other side, we first need to remove three Torx T3 screws holding on the audio board connector cover. Once the cover has been removed, you can disconnect the speaker cable Remove the T3 screw and adhesive and lift the assembly free, just like we did with the other side. There are two more Torx T3 screws attaching the battery tray that need to be removed. The battery is now only being held in place with adhesive strips similar to the ones that held the speaker assemblies in place, with three on each side. 
Simply lift the tabs from the chassis and use them to detach the adhesive as you did before. The battery should now be able to lift up and out of the computer. Before installing the battery, we'll first need to place new adhesive strips using the sheet of shorter ones provided in your kit. We'll be placing six strips, three on each side, on the raised areas in the chassis. Peel each strip from the sheet and place it so that the black tab hangs over the end of the raised area the strip is on. You can then remove the red backing from the adhesive strips. Go ahead and set the battery into place, taking care that the holes in the edge tabs line up with the corresponding holes in the chassis. You can now secure the battery with the two Torx T3 screws. Next, we'll use the longer adhesive strips for the speaker assemblies. Place a strip on each side along the center of the gap between the battery cells and edge of the chassis and back far enough that the black tab sits right up on the indentation. Peel back the red backing for the speaker to your left and set it into place, making sure the notch in the assembly goes around the raised post in the chassis and that it lays flat. Then secure it with its Torx T3 screw. Push the speaker connector cable back into its socket Then replace the audio board cover and secure it with its three Torx T3 screws. Then repeat the process on the other side, except you don't need to recover the audio board on this side. Push down to re-adhere the trackpad cable to the battery and push the connector into its socket. You can then secure the connector cover with its Torx T3 screws. Finally, push the power connector into place, then flip the latch over and make sure it's in the locked position. You can now set the cover back into place, making sure it sits flush. The four longest pentalobe screws go along the hinge edge.
Finally, replace the remaining six screws which are all the same size. Now that the battery's been installed, we need to calibrate the power system. First, plug in the USB-C charger and let the battery charge up to 100%. Once it's reached 100%, keep it charging for at least another two hours. However, you can use your computer during this time rather than leaving it off. After that, we'll need to discharge the battery. First, in the Energy Saver Preference pane, make sure all the sliders are set to the right and any power saving measures, like sleeping the hard drive, are turned off. Do this for both the power adapter and the battery settings. Once you've done that, disconnect the power cable and let the battery discharge completely until the computer shuts down. Continue using it even through the low battery warning. Don't do anything particularly heavy. Steady and even usage will result in better power system calibration. Leave it shut down for at least 5 hours to ensure the battery is completely drained. Then, fully charge the computer back up to 100% without unplugging. Once the battery is charged back up, the power management system is properly calibrated. You can now set your energy saver settings back to normal and use your computer as you normally would.